Hey guys, back with another FPC Okeechobee podcast. Marie, how are you doing today? Tired. You're tired? Why are you tired? Hospitals. That's true. Sick we, children. To record this, we had been sent the weekend <laughs> tired. in the hospital. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, but she's getting better. She a is. A little bit, a little bit. So we're, we're excited. We're excited about that. But back to the book of Mark. In Mark chapter 10, I want to talk about a... Pretty famous story in Scripture. It's the story of blind Bartimaeus. Are you familiar with Bartimaeus? Yes. Okay. So in verse 46 of Mark chapter 10, it talks about this guy. It says, And they reached Jericho, and as Jesus' and disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. And when Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, Tell him to come here. So he called the blind man. Cheer up, they said. Come on, he's calling you. And Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, Go, for your faith has healed you. And instantly the man could see, and he followed Jesus down the road. So, I like this account yeah, for I several reasons. Yeah. Um, why, what, 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 what do you find intriguing about it that I you just, read out? I don't know. There's just something that I love about how he had this expectation and he didn't care about decorum or being quiet. Like he yelled out, God have mercy on me. And yeah. that should be the reflection of all of our hearts. God have mercy. Yeah. So I love it. Because there was a lot of things he could have asked for. He could have said, in that moment, he could have said, heal me, um, give me sight, help me. But he asked for mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, and even how he refers to it. Jesus, son of David. That had some really big connotations to it. That phrase in the middle there, son of David. Because... The son of David would have been one who belonged on the throne of Israel. Not only that, son of David had the connotation of Messiah. Yeah, it's it's definitely his way of saying, I believe that you are the Messiah. Yes, I believe that you are the Messiah. And, you know, Bartimaeus is a tough place, and people in this day and time were in a tough place. Um, You know, there there weren't any, any kind of help. Social program. There was nothing. All of you know, you there, know. there was nothing. And really, you know, whereas even um, before we had all the social programs that we have now, the church and the community really filled a lot of those voids for people that would have been in Bartimaeus's situation. And you'll even see that in the book of Acts as the church grows and the commands that are given to the church by the apostles for taking care of widows and orphans and Things like that, you know. I mean, it's it's very clear that the church's job is to take care of those in need within their community. He didn't he didn't have any of that. The church hadn't been established yet, and the culture would have looked at Bartimaeus and they would have thought this guy is blind because he sinned and did something wrong. Mm-hmm. It's like the man born blind in John chapter nine. You know, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Bartimaeus being blind would have been blamed on him. A woman that was unable to bear children was blamed on her. You know, so they had a really skewed thought of this. So they would have seen Bartimaeus as a sinner. And so that even helps you understand why, <laughs> excuse me, the crowd would have shouted at him to be quiet. You deserve this. This is your yeah. punishment. Yeah, this is your punishment. This is what you're getting over here. You know, be quiet. You're interrupting. You know, somebody in his position would have been seen as less than. And that's not at all how God viewed the situation, though. God viewed the situation as this was an opportunity for Christ to show off his power and who he was and make it obvious to everybody that he was the Messiah and that he was the Son of God. So... (laughs) <laughs> Excuse me. So he knew he needed Jesus. So he asks for this mercy. And 
I like the fact that he asks for mercy. And when he does this, he's not coming to Jesus demanding something. He doesn't feel like God owed him something. I think that can be a big problem amongst Christians is that we feel like God owes us something. God doesn't owe us anything. I think it's even reflective in how we pray sometimes. I was thinking the other day about how I get offended when Charlie asks for things, but not in an asking kind of way. She doesn't say, may I please have, or mom, can you do this for me? Sometimes she will tell me mm-hmm. um, to Give do Give me things. some apple juice. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, mm, excuse me? That's yeah. not how you ask for something and that's yes. not how you treat me. And so how, how do we go to the God of the universe who is holy and, and righteous and worthy of praise and almighty do we demand Mm -hmm. from him? And I I think that sometimes we do. We say, God, fix this this way. God, give grace. God, do this. God, do that. And um, I just think that we need to take a step back. God, show mercy. Will you, will you show mercy? Mm -hmm. Will you do this? Um, And And what he's asking for here, he's asking God to do something, but it's, you know, have have mercy on me. And it's showing his, his, place in this relationship i am the lesser you are the greater you are capable yeah and he, he had full faith that it could because the, the greek happen. word that we translate as mercy there it literally means to bring help to the wretched that would be the connotation behind it so bartimaeus understood that he needed something he could not provide for himself and he had no right to demand he cried out asking for help in his it is one um, commentary put it in his wretched condition. Mm-hmm. Undeserving. Yeah. So he didn't come at this with any type of pride or any type of what I deserve. He came at this with a, you know, God, will you help me? And so he had such a different outlook. You know, it's it's to me, it's it's very different than a lot of the theology that we see taught in some of our churches today, specifically the, um, we talked about a little bit over time, the health, wealth, prosperity gospel yeah. that comes across as being very, you know, uh, demanding and God's going to give you this, God's going to give you that, this is what you deserve, you know, that kind of thing, you know, your best life now kind of nonsense. And that's not what Scripture shows. It shows men and women coming to God broken, understanding their need for salvation. That's Bartimaeus understands his need, but he also understands he is not worthy of this. You know, and so the people just said, you know, they yelled, be quiet. And he simply shouted louder. And I think that Christ is more concerned about the heart and the soul of a person. Not that he doesn't care about our physical well-being, but foremost is the soul Mm -hmm. and if it doesn't bring him glory and it doesn't bring about salvation or help take a step in that direction maybe it's best if there isn't healing in that situation i don't know god god understands and he knows all of our needs and he doesn't always say yes to the healing but it doesn't mean that he's not in control and he doesn't have a purpose and that it's not still good. Yeah. There were people that were in Israel that during the time of Christ that he didn't heal. He talks about that when he went to Nazareth and he was he was there in front of his hometown, he didn't do any miracles because of the lack of faith in their heart and their attitude. He simply He simply didn't. And so these people with But I have to sorry, Go ahead, I just please. I know that you're saying that it is a lack of faith, but even the person with the most faith, it's not about us. It's not a what about what we bring to the table either. Like sure. you do need faith. Yeah, and that's what is said here at the end of this. But God does have a purpose. Right. And and you know, sometimes God God places us in situations we would bluntly rather not be in because He has ultimate purpose. And there is there is grace and there is sufficiency in whatever situation He has you in. I mean, Paul talks about um, 
think it's in Galatians, where he says, you know, God has given me this thorn in the flesh, and mm -hmm. I've asked three times that it be yeah. taken from me. Um, and God said no to that. Yeah. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Exactly. And that's just kind of what he was bringing up to me today and just showing me my grace is sufficient for you, even in this trial or even in this difficult situation. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't always take things away right away. And, and I know that he's in control. Um, so he allows things to happen. Um, but His grace is sufficient, and that's what my faith needs to be. Because when my faith is that God have mercy in whatever way He sees fit, I mean, Christ even asked for the cup to be taken from Him, and but that the wasn't the, the plan. Was, was the Father's will. It Not wasn't will, His will. will. And so our our prayer should be, God have mercy in whatever way You deem fit, whether that's for me to walk through this as You walk with me, and give grace or whether that's to take the cup away. Mm -hmm. He has grace and sufficiency in, in both answers. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, just, and, and you, I think you identify with this so much, the thought process you're talking about because of the road you've walked down with Charlie. Right, where I've asked for that healing and it hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, though, God has been with me every step of the way, so I can't say that He's not still good. Mm -hmm. um, and it's for His glory, and I'm okay with that. It's not always okay, but I'm okay <laughs> in the end. Sometimes you have to work at being okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that it's it's hard for Christians to admit that struggle, that there's times when it's tough for us to be okay with where God has us. You know, I've been there. I've I, I dealt with it with Charlie. I've dealt with other parts of my life. I had a hard time being okay with what God was doing and where he had me. Mm -hmm. But I still had to come to a place of saying, okay, you're God, I'm not. You're God, I'm not. So that was a vital and important part of it. Well, and I, um, I've questioned before, and I, I've gotten to the place that I almost only want to pray for things that I know he's going to say yes to, but you know, he's working on my heart in that way too. He wants me to ask yeah. for the healing. He wants me to ask for the difficult things that only mm -hmm. he can do, but he also wants me to be okay with whatever answer he yeah. gives. Um, and so like in the hospital with Charlie just this past weekend, I, I felt strengthened. I felt fortified and I felt, you know, just God's strength holding me up. It wasn't until we got home yesterday and um, Sunday and then it just kind of all hits you again. Mm -hmm. um, and you're just processing a lot of things. And so even this morning, like I just kind of, God, I'm just kind of at the end of my rope a little bit, even though, and it, it's so funny because She's getting better, but I'm still processing all of it. And so it just kind of hit me this morning. Yeah. And It rolls off of her a little better than it does us sometimes. Yeah. And so, like, I'm strong when she is, when she needs me, I'm, I'm strong and I'm there for mm -hmm. her. And now that she's getting better, I can, like, take a breather. And then it just kind of hits you again. Yeah. And, you know, you process a lot of emotions and things. And so. And we've got to process those things as we go through trials. As yeah. As we go through the. the the different, the different spots and the tough roads that God sometimes sends us down. And there's there's different provisions for mm -hmm. each of those moments. And yeah. And and another thing is, God knows how much we can bear and what we can deal with, and He understands that. And so He's gonna. I think a lot of times He takes us right to the edge of that, and I feel like sometimes He'll even push us, push us over a little bit. Where but he's he the us. one. He's, he's the one like, holding oh, us up. I got you. And so the other thing that I um I was thinking about this morning is the just the verse from Psalms where it talks about the Lord is my my portion in my cup. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that there is nothing that you should hold on too tightly to. If it's a healing that only if you get that healing will you believe, it's not that. The belief comes first. Yeah. And the belief that He is sufficient and mm -hmm. He is your cup regardless, I think that that's the place that you got to come to. Yeah. If we only trust God when we get what we want, do we really trust God? Exactly. Because that is I not want, the God of Scripture. No, that's no. a God of your own making. Yeah, because what I want 
may not always be what's best for me, and it may not always be part of God's plan. Bartimaeus didn't want to be blind for a day. Mm -hmm. Okay, We don't know how long he was blind for. We don't know if he went blind. We don't know if he was born blind. But we know he's blind. Nobody wants to be blind for a single day. But God does at times walk us down these difficult roads. And he will bring us through them. We go through seasons. We go through harder times than others. But his spirit will guide us and lead us. The Holy Spirit, God, walks us through these things. We will be okay. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always feel like that in the middle of it, though. Bartimaeus sitting on the side of the road every day begging had to be very difficult. Yeah. Not knowing when the end was going to come. Not knowing what was going to happen. But God had a plan that he didn't know at the time. And the same is true for us. And we deal with illness. We deal with difficult finances. We deal with broken relationships. We deal with all these things, but God is still sufficient in all those. And Bartimaeus understood that, and so he is crying out, have mercy on me. Yeah. And then as as he finally um, gets to Jesus, Jesus asks him the question. He says, what do you mean to do for you? And it might seem that the need of Bartimaeus was obvious, right? But Jesus had delivered purpose in this question. There was power in the asking, and there was power in the answer. And so he told Jesus exactly what he needed. And that's God wants us to do that, to, to, to take that, Son of David, have mercy on me. That was a very general statement to God, right? You think about a prayer, that's a very general prayer. Lord, have mercy on me. That's very general. But God also wants us to come down into the details of what we are asking of him. You know, he literally asked that question, what did he do for you? And then he says, I want to see. I want to see. And his faith was already there. He already believed that Christ could do that. That's why he was crying out, Son of David. He's crying out, have mercy on me. And so he heals him. He, Jesus tells him, go for your faith has healed you. And that's a really common statement Jesus makes throughout the Gospels. You have been healed by your faith. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Your faith is healed. I mean, just all these different ways he says that same basic phrase throughout this. It was a very specific kind of faith, and it, I believe it was an all-trusting faith. He truly believed. He, he, I'm sure he'd heard things, right? He had heard. He, he may have heard that Jesus had healed other blind people. Blindness is the um, most common um, thing that Jesus healed. He healed more, from the council of the Gospels, he healed more blind people than anything else. So maybe he'd heard about some of those things. And he knew Jesus could do it. He trusted. He believed. And it says instantly he could see. Right? Instantly. And so sometimes I think God does answer those prayers instantly. You know, I remember <clears throat> talking with a family here at the church um, some, some time back. They had a little girl, and they were, they, they were going to have to do um, surgery on her. And it was a it was a brain surgery, and they went and did one more scan to make sure they knew exactly what was going on, and the the tumor that the child had was gone. The child is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Runs around every day, has a great time, perfectly healthy. Doctors could not explain where it went. Absolutely instantaneous. I mean, it was like, wait, this was here. What's what's going on? And so they, it's gone. They sent him home. They didn't even do the surgery. Unbelievable story. And so there's that instantaneous healing. But, you know, me and you and our family, with Charlie, we haven't. That, that's not what God has given us. But have we still seen God's mercy, God's grace, and we still see God work? She's walking and talking, and yeah. those were prayers for many years. Yeah, that yeah. We, prayed for, we prayed for two years for her to walk. Yeah. You know, and talking was even longer than that. So, you know, it was for us as individuals, it, it just our specific situation, because God handles things differently. It's been a much more measured, he's taken us one step at a time. And that's been okay. Mm -hmm. You know, have I wanted instantaneous things? You bet. But I remember the first time she walked across the living room. You know, I remember when I could start to understand the words she was saying. <laughs> I see her write her letters and numbers. You know, so it's been much more gradual when we didn't know how all those things were going to work. So just because God doesn't answer a prayer instantaneously or answer it exactly like you want him to doesn't mean he doesn't hear you, and it doesn't mean he's not working. Yeah. He's working on his schedule. And to, and to 
the end result of his glory. Yes, yes, whatever that outcome may be, whatever that outcome may be. And sometimes when it comes to certain healing situations, do we think about Bartimaeus, sometimes he doesn't give us the answer we necessarily want, but it's the one that is required. And there's ultimate healing found through salvation in Jesus Christ in our eternal home in heaven. Mm -hmm. So for a Christian, there's ultimate healing no matter what. And that's why we should look at this story in awe because it's, it's not about Bartimaeus and it's not about us. It's about the fame and glory of Christ mm -hmm. because he is who he says he is. Yeah, and so and he was able to do this. Exactly. The fact that he was able to heal, even if he doesn't heal us. He healed Bartimaeus, mm -hmm. and it shows his power yeah. and his glory and the truth of who he is yeah. and, and ultimately what that means for us for eternity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so Bartimaeus is a, is a great example of the power of faith and the power of God, you know, because Bartimaeus truly believed God could do this, and God is capable. God is capable. And, and I think our heart's cry should always be have mercy. Have mercy. Mm -hmm. That's a great way. I think it's a good way for us to end, yeah. end today. So uh, we won't be here next week for a podcast. Uh, we're not going to be available, but uh, we'll pick up the following week with another podcast for you guys. And we hope you enjoyed uh, our podcast with us, and we hope to see you at FTCO.